Hey brothers and sisters, today is September 3rd, 2024. And about three years ago, I shared something that the Lord shared with me and I just feel really led to share it again. So at the time, three years ago, I was on my back porch at night and just weeping to the Lord and my heart was just crushed because my little boy was going through a lot of a uh, lot of problems with the leukodystrophy that he has and I was just I was just saying to the Lord Lord is the rapture ever going to happen which I know it will but I was just voicing my frustration to the Lord And I went to go to sleep that night. And I went into a dream. And in the dream, the Lord was talking to me about first fruits. And this is from Romans 8.23. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our bodies. And then he said to me, Omer count, Omer count, Omer count, three times, which was three years ago, okay? And it was shortly after that I had a dream. Like you, you guys really have no idea the warfare that I go through. Um, the Lord gave me the office of prophecy. And the gift of discerning of spirits and all these things, right? And... The enemy is trying to kill my child, okay? And um, I'm really, really tired. Even when I sleep, I'm, I'm fighting demons in my sleep, okay? So another night, I've shared this in the past also about three years ago. I had this dream. In the dream, there's this Christian singer named Roy Fields. And in the dream, I knew that he was on his way to come and pick us up. That was it. Okay? I, the next day, looked up the name Roy. And the name Roy means red and king. And his last name is Fields. Roy Fields. King of the Fields. And then I had a brother, uh, Brother William, sent me a message about something I had no knowledge of whatsoever at the time. And I guess during the month of Elul, it is known as when the king is in the fields. Okay. So, I'm going to read this comment. This is from Sister Colleen Cardwell. She said, Kim, the counting of the Omer three times occurs with the Essenes Temple Scroll and its 150-day first produce cycle. 50 days till wheat, 50 more days to wine, and 50 more days to oil, which is the 22nd of Elul. There's also another dream that I've never shared with anyone except for my brother Paul, who's one of my best friends. He's very, very, very in the spirit, and he's also very prophetic. Well, in this dream, he was standing next to me, 
And there was this person standing on a mountain, which I believe is the mountain of the Lord. I dream about this same mountain all the time. And um, this person was standing there on this mountain. And they had this clothing on. And there were these droplets on this person's clothing. And Brother Paul said to me, look, it's water. And I said, look closer. It's oil. So I believe that the Lord is, is pointing to the feast of oil. Which I didn't even know existed until after I shared this with Brother Paul and we did some digging. So I'm going to read to you guys this article. And it's about the Hebrew month of Elul, when the king is in the field. In the Bible, the king would leave his palace during the month of Elul and set up camp in the field and everyone was welcome to approach him. Most of the year, the king lived in a palace protected by guards and iron gates. To have an audience with the king, you had to be summoned. Should you approach without being summoned, you would die. Esther 4.11 Unless he extended the golden scepter to you and spared your life. Which is interesting. Because before I even had a channel on YouTube, I was just crying out to the Lord and I was saying, here I am, God send me, I'll go. And I needed to hear from him. I needed him to use me and I meant it. And I literally saw people standing in a circle, all dressed in white, looking up, full of joy. And this golden white light fell on them. And it wove through them in this most beautiful, intricate pattern. And as it did, it started moving them in a spiral whirlwind motion. And then they started coming up off the ground. And as they did, they turned into white doves, which I believe represents those who have the Holy Spirit in Christ leaving this earth. And then Jesus came to me in the air and put his hands out to me and I put my hands in his and he just smiled at me and I saw this woman on a stage by herself and she was holding a long golden staff that was glowing with gold light and it took me several months to to realize he was showing me myself yeah he was going to put me on a stage by myself to tell people that he was coming Unless he extended the golden scepter to you and spared your life. After the summons, there was a palace protocol to learn before you could approach a king. You had to dress correctly, speak correctly, and have proper mannerisms. Your presentation had to be flawless. Once you got to the capital, you were ushered to the palace through the many intimidating gates corridors and anti-chambers anti that led to the throne room. Even the Queen of Sheba passed out when she came before King Solomon. But once a year in the month of Elul, the king would come into the field. He would leave his palace and go out among his people. He would set up his royal tent in the field near a town, and all who wanted to see him were welcome. The announcement was made, the king is in the field. They were all welcome to come just as they were. No dress code, no protocol, no intimidation. The king receives them all with a smiling face and radiant countenance, desiring to hear their concerns. 
The peasant behind his plow had access to the king in a manner unavailable to the highest ranking minister in the royal court when the king is in the palace. Second Chronicles 19 is about King Jehoshaphat going into the field. So Jeho Jehoshaphat lived in Jerusalem and went out again among the people from Beersheba, which the Lord gave me that word years ago too, to the hill country of Ephraim and brought them back to the, to the Lord, the God of their fathers. The king went into the field to turn the people's hearts back to the Lord. Restoration. When he went out among the people, he saw things God didn't like injustice, bribery, and oppression. So he established judges to end oppression and bring justice. God wants his people to experience his character. He wants to manifest his justice, his righteousness, and his love. And this was not being seen among the people. Another king went out into the field, who went out into the field is Melchizedek. In Genesis 14, Melchizedek gave Abram bread and wine and blessed him, saying, Blessed is Abram by God, and blessed is God, who delivered your enemies into your hand. When Abram was weary from battle, King Melchizedek came into the field to strengthen and refresh him. He blessed Abram. Of course, the greatest king who left his throne to come into the field was Jesus. He lived in our field in a tent of mortal flesh. He was God made accessible, smiling, and radiant. He came to manifest God's goodness, love, and righteousness to heal and deliver all. He came to draw us into a relationship with the Father. That's what it looks like when the king is in the field. He is the king of kings. Revelation 1.6 says, He made us kings and priests. We are in the field. What should that look like? We should be walking among the people, receiving them with a smiling face, listening to their concerns, and like Jehoshaphat, reconciling them back to God by manifesting his righteousness and love towards them. So three years ago, the Lord was talking to me about first fruits. Romans 8, 23. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our bodies. Roy Fields was coming to pick us up. And I, I said to my husband, do you know who that is? And he said, no. And I, then I said to him, he's very famous. had many dreams about oil. I had one dream where I was walking through a forest by myself. <laughs> and I was led by the Holy Spirit to this giant container of oil. And I grabbed it and held it close to my chest like it was sacred. That's the anointing of God. You know, I've reached a point in my life where I love everyone, but at the same time, I let very few people close to me. 
Because when you have a calling for God, the enemy will send people that you think are your friends to try to destroy you and your calling. And I've experienced it actually not too long ago from someone I thought really was close to God, but they're not. But it made me stronger in Christ. It finally tuned me to only God's voice. And I've reached a point where I don't really care what people think or what their opinions are. I only care what God's thoughts are. I only trust him and other people who are actually walking in the spirit and not their flesh or their carnal mind, which is an enmity with God. My channel, it's never been about me. It's never been about being popular. It's never been about having lots of subscribers. It's always been to just glorify him and share what he shares with me and my son. That he shares things with me that there's there's no way that I could even make sense of it unless it's from him. Like, I didn't even know what the king is in the fields meant. I didn't even know what the month of Elul was when he told me all this stuff. And I, and I was at a place of brokenness. And I was crushed in spirit. And the Lord is near those that are crushed in spirit. And God knows my heart, and he knows that I only trust him. I don't, I don't trust calendars. I don't trust other people's channels. I don't care what other people say on their channels. I really do not and never will. I only care what the Lord specifically tells me. There's a whole lot of people that just want to lean on their own understanding. And they don't really seek him so that he can make their path straight. It's a whole lot of head knowledge and not a lot of heart knowledge. And people can watch who they want to watch. Uh, you know, I'm not judging anyone. I'm just saying... I, I'm not interested in what anybody else has to say. I'm going to stay close to the Lord and just allow Him to tell me what He sees and what He knows. Because I don't know anything without Him. And I don't want to know anything without Him. Unless He specifically guides me to something, I don't trust it. I don't trust other people. I don't even trust myself. I only trust in where the Holy Spirit leads me to. What I truly don't understand is why the majority of believers don't do the same thing. There's a whole lot of pride in the body of Christ. It's really sad. Because it's caused a whole lot of division. Instead of leading people and feeding the sheep and leading people to Christ. Feeding the sheep, which we're supposed to do. Everybody just wants to be fed by other people and want to glorify each other instead of God. 
I'll never understand it. But I can feel how it makes the Lord's heart feel. And it's, it's really not good. But, you know, people are going to do what they're going to do. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I don't want to ever lean on my own understanding or make it about me. I only want to glorify God. I only want to share the things that I know He is speaking about to me. In the book of John, Jesus is, is he's praying to the Father. And, um, It's one of my favorite scriptures ever. But Jesus is talking to the Father and he's, he's praying to him. And his heart's desire to the Father, he's voicing it to the Father. That, that they would be one in him as he is one with the Father. I in you, and you in them. That's the Father's heart. That we would be one with Him, just as Jesus is one with the Father. That's the deepest love there ever is. And that's where my heart wants to always be and I fail every day but my focus is on that prayer my intent is to focus only on the, his words when he spoke that to the father I'm not trying to set a rapture date. I never will. I'm just sharing pieces that he gives me. One thing I do know is that he wants us to know that he's about to come and he wants us to be encouraged and to edify one another as we see the day approaching. He wants us to never give up on our blessed hope, Titus 2.13. But it seems like there's so many other supposed Christians that are coming against that. Because they just want to be right in their flesh. It's really disgraceful. And the Lord is not pleased with that at all. It's one thing to share something. It's another thing entirely. To just get people's hopes up so high like it's a particular day. It's, it's, it's not good. We should be watching every single day till he comes. The only one that's right is the Lord. And the closer you get to him, the more he will reveal to you
Unfortunately, a lot of people don't want to do that. They want to keep getting their ears tickled and following people that the Lord did not send. But yet they prophesy from their own bellies. And people just eat it up. No discernment whatsoever. I'll never understand it. When I ask the Lord these things, because it grieves me so much. Because people follow man instead of God so much. And I just, I talk to the Lord about everything. When I ask him these things, he says to me, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. We are all going to stand before God one day. Remember that. And when I stand before God myself, I want him to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Not because I relied on my own understanding, because I listened to his voice only. That's the only way you can do a good job. <laughs> it's just, there's just so many hirelings everywhere. And people just love them. And they think they're just great. But they do not hear from God. They're listening to deceiving spirits. And prophesying from their own bellies. Just like the word tells us will happen in the last days. These people are having their conscience seared like a hot iron. They don't care for you. They don't even care for God. All they care about is themselves. But they tell you what you want to hear. Because it makes them feel special and important. But they haven't fully submitted themselves to God. And that's why these deceiving spirits can mess with them. And you align yourselves with these people, the same spirits are going to mess with you. People don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear the truth. They just want to listen to what their itching ears want to hear. Just like the word tells us. So be it. I'll never do it. I'd rather die. I don't care about being popular. That's why I don't even show my face. It's not about me all about the Lord and he is coming sooner than you think and when he comes I want to be found only listening to his voice and not the voice of hirelings how about you where's your focus what are you listening to? Believe on Jesus today. He died in your place for the remission of all of your sin. He was buried and rose again on the third day for your justification before God. All you have to do is believe that. He who knew no sin became sin for us and nailed it to the cross forever. You need to understand the exchange that was made for you on the cross. 
for the glory of love. And once you fully understand that and you know who you are in Christ, that's when everything changes. That the enemy likes to keep people stuck in their carnal mind, which is an enmity with God. So they cannot grow in the maturity in Christ. You see, if Satan can keep you from knowing your identity in Christ, you won't be any good on this earth for the kingdom of heaven. You won't be good at leading people to Christ because you'll be so stuck in who you are in your flesh. You're rendered useless in the spirit on earth because you, you how are you going to lead people to Christ when you don't even know who you are in Christ? You're just still focused on your old man that was crucified with Christ because you don't know who you are in Christ. Satan, he, he tries to keep everybody stuck there. He even tried that with Jesus in the desert. <laughs> That's his number one. Number one thing he tries to do to people in Christ is he tries to keep you from growing who you are in who you are in Christ. And then you start following all these other people, false teachers, false prophets, listening to what your itching ears want to hear. Instead of just asking God and reading his word and asking him things. Because you know what? If you really ask him from your heart, from, from, a, from your heart that, that wants to know what the real truth is, only from God, he will answer you. But very few people seem to want to do that. They'd rather ask people what the truth is. Which is never the truth. I can feel how that makes the Lord feel. It's, it's, it's horrible. It breaks his heart that people just do not just come to him and ask him. Like his word says, you need no man to teach you, but the Holy Spirit will guide you to all truth. Like Lisa says, if you let him, the problem is, is nobody will let him because they, they just want to be in control of their own thoughts and everything. But the reality is, is you're not in control of anything. Only God is. I cannot wait for the day when this whole world bows their knee and claims that Jesus Christ is Lord. And it's coming real soon. And they gave him the honor that he deserves instead of men really looking forward to that day. In the meantime, let's continue to encourage and edify one another as we see the day approaching. Because our king is about to come and pick us up. And he's going to pick us up just in time. Whether you believe that or not, I don't care. I know that. Seek the Lord while he may still be found. Stop seeking other people's approval of you. And seek the Lord. He's the only real friend you will ever have. All you have to do is come to him just as you are.
open your heart to God and he will answer you. He is knocking at your door because he wants to come in and be one with you. Love you guys. Hope fast.